I'll just go ahead and warn you up front that this will be a lame joke, like most science jokes, but stay with me anyway. Please. Okay, here we go. Do you ever wonder where the chemists have their lunch? They have it on a periodic table. <clears throat> We've spilled some information about periods of the periodic table. Now, let's move on to groups. Groups are the vertical columns in the periodic table. Much like in periods, elements in the same group will have similar properties and are given numbers that indicate the number of electrons in the outermost shell, or valence electron, of that element's atoms. This means that all atoms within a specific group will have the same amount of electrons on their outer shell. For example, all of the elements in group 1 will have one electron in the outermost shell of their atoms, while all elements in group 2 will have two electrons in their outermost shell. This information is incredibly useful for classifying elements into their appropriate groups based on the number of valence electrons. The classification from the left column, or group 1, to right, group 18, also informs us about each group's specific properties and their names. Group 1 are called alkali metals, and group 2 alkaline earth metals. They are called alkali because they create an alkali solution when reacting with water. Alkali metals are shiny, soft, and more reactive than the elements in group 2. Both groups reside in the two leftmost columns of the periodic table. Now, let's explore the middle blocks, which are known as the transition metals. The precise boundary between the main groups and transition metals remains a topic of debate, but they generally span from group 3 to group 12. The term transition refers to the transitional nature of properties between typical metals and non-metals. The elements in this block, excluding group 11 and 12, exhibit excellent conductivity, have high melting and boiling points, and are hard, strong, and malleable, just like metals. However, it also has the ability to form colored compounds, such as in precious stones, and some are immune to corrosion, such as gold from group 11. They offer a fascinating subject of study, due to their various behaviors and applications. Our next group is halogens. Halogens are recognized by taking part in displacement reactions and the salt formation when they react with alkali metals. For example, kitchen salt. The halogens are among the most chemically reactive elements in the periodic table, in contrast to our next and last group, the noble gases. The noble gases, also named as group 18 or 0, are the most stable group in the periodic table. All other elements react to attain the stability exhibited by the noble gases. These noble elements are incredibly unreactive and can even be used to prevent reactions from occurring. Now, I'm sure you have a better understanding of what groups in the periodic table are and the properties they convey. But there's more to explore in our next episode, so be sure to subscribe. We're going to continue our explanation from the row or periods of the periodic table discussed in the previous video to the column or group of the periodic table. The periodic table arranges elements into groups with similar properties. One of the most important ones is atomic radius. Atomic radius is a distance from the nucleus of an atom to the outermost electron orbital. As we move down a group, the atomic radius increases due to the addition of electron shells surrounding the nucleus, making the atoms larger. As a result, ionization energy, which measures the energy required to remove an electron, follows the radius change of the atom. It decreases as you move down a group where the atoms become larger. This is due to the outer shell electrons becoming further away from the positively charged protons of the nucleus, which make larger atoms exhibit a weaker electromagnetic attraction, hence making it easier to remove its electrons. The negative charges of inner shell's electrons also take part in reducing the force of attraction on the outer electrons by repelling each other, acting as an electron shield. Because of this concept, the ionization energies required to remove one electron after another change successively. The first ionization energy represents the energy needed to eliminate the first electron from an atom, and the second one refers to the energy required for the second electron removal, and so on. The successive ionization energy increases because, with each electron removal, the atom becomes smaller. This leads to a stronger attraction from the positively charged nucleus, demanding more energy to remove the subsequent electron. This means the first ionization energy is lower than the second, and the second is lower than the third, and so forth. You should know that you'll see a significant jump each time you transition to a new shell. Another crucial trend is electron affinity, which measures an atom's ability to attract electrons towards itself. 
The trend also decreases down a group, since the protons need to attract the electrons across increasingly wider gaps and through more electron shielding as well. Larger atoms, hence, have weaker proton electrons attraction, making it harder for them to attract more electrons. The final trend, electronegativity, is the ability of an atom to hold on to its bonding electrons in a covalent bond. And just like the ionization energy and the electron affinity, the number generally decreases as you go down a group, corresponding to the size of the atom. This is because as atoms get larger, the protons are no longer able to pull the bonding electrons to themselves as effectively. There are a few exceptions to the trends that can be explained by examining the stability of the atoms. For instance, an atom that has 8 electrons or a full outer shell is stable and has reduced tendency to react as it does not need to lose or gain electrons. This stability is precisely what atoms seek and is the driving force behind why they react in the first place. So, the more stable an element is, the higher its ionization energy, electron affinity and electronegativity. Thus, the harder it is to remove its electrons. Although you've now mastered the trends of groups in the periodic table, there are still many more subjects to understand. Subscribe so you don't miss it. Thank you for your continuous support, especially our valued patrons and members who have been encouraging us to keep producing more quality content.